In the beginning, there was 2016's Angelic to the Core. And am I starting to notice patterns here, or is the to the core some kind of anagram for the two Corys? Anyway, former 1980s child star Corey Feldman has failed in the music industry fairly unspectacularly since the early 90s, with nobody paying attention to his several albums that were released. I think one of the reasons why his earlier albums didn't get any love probably had to do with the bedroom studio quality sound in the recordings. Wow, that's really bad quality from someone who in 1994, when this album was released, still had a bit of clout in Hollywood. Fast forward to 2016 when the Corey Feldman name had been absolutely resigned to the has-been category and only nostalgic 80s movie nerds still cared about perhaps seeing him at a convention for an autograph. Nonetheless, Corey Feldman was dead set on being a fucking rock star or Michael Jackson impersonator or something having to do with music. You see, with movies, you need a whole team of people to make the dream work. But with music, hell, all you need is a bedroom studio and yourself. When Corey released Angelic to the Core, he really went for it. He pulled out all the stops and would make sure this was a big deal that couldn't be ignored. I've previously made an entire video dissecting this album in all of its cringy glory, which you can view by clicking here, but I won't be talking about that album in this video. I want to talk about the Feldsters' reemergence as a live performer on this bizarre Loserville tour that's been happening this year. This is essentially a showcase of a bunch of novelty acts who have accumulated their own online followings. Limp Bizkit, in 2024, who are headlining this festival, have fully leaned into their status as a meme and are embracing it because, well, they really have no other choice. Their music is still amazing, but Fred Durst is corny, and everybody knows it, seemingly including Fred himself. All of the other acts on this Loserville lineup are also very self-aware that they too are corny on some level. All of them except Corey Feldman. The product that Corey is presenting on stage, in his mind, is not a joke at all. There is not an ounce of tongue-in-cheek in these performances, which honestly makes it that much more hilarious. And everyone is in on the joke except Corey, who still thinks the joke is on us. The joke, the joke. Stick around as we look at the Fell Dogs performance for the 2024 Loserville tour. This is Dancing with Ghosts. How about Goonies too? Did they ever was that ever in the talks? I like to be seen for the art that I'm creating today. Okay, so I don't want to go living in the past. Yeah. Let's talk about the set. Let's talk about the theatrics. Let's Here, talk let about me the see. See, I life. told you, Fred. On the heels of the Loserville tour, which kicked off on July 16th in Somerset, Wisconsin, Fred Durst and crew put together this bizarre little promo video featuring all of the main performers basically doing a scripted comedic skit together. And even though I do think Corey Feldman was in on the joke in this video, he certainly wasn't fucking around on stage. The show opens up with the same anticlimactic energy that has been seen on any YouTube clip of this guy playing live. Corey's 2022 single, The Comeback King, has been the de facto opener for all of his live shows, and he never quite sticks the landing on any performance that I've seen. Videos are not playing, guys. The videos. Videos. The band is either off time, the crowd isn't participating, or there are just other technical issues that befall the Feldster. <laughs> On the same count, everybody, really? He's still rocking that ridiculous outfit that looks like bunched up window curtains from a haunted house. The Corey Feldman and his Angels era lineup is long gone in favor of five desperate souls who want to squeeze whatever little notoriety for themselves out of Corey Feldman as possible. Now, I can sort of understand the older dudes who just see this as a gig playing some bullshit music and getting paid. But how Corey keeps tricking these young, attractive women to be a part of this train wreck is beyond me. You're young still. You have a chance. Don't waste it on this pile of steaming shit. You know he's banging at least one of them. That's the rule. If you want to be in my band, I'll take you straight to the top. 
I have a lot of connections in Hollywood. Even though this is only a 27 minute set, it already feels like it's dragging ass. Comeback King is such a repetitive song and at best sounds like a discarded Primus B-side. Then you have all these Timu Michael Jackson performances during the set that are just laughably embarrassing. Let's take a look at some of them. Did I mention these songs are fucking awful? Not only are we greeted to a complete wardrobe change by the third song, we also get a throwback in his catalog. You see, folks, this is a lean set of Corey Feldman classics that span his whole career. The ah, 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 ah song is called Diseased from his second album, Former Child Actor, which was released almost 10 years after his first album. Almost reminds me of those Nepo babies I was talking about in my previous video, taking their sweet fucking time in between albums because they don't have to work for a living. I think in this song he was trying to go hard and please all the Limp Biscuit fans, but he just can't help but to be himself. He's just gotta be Corey Feldman, so he starts felding out hardcore. <laughs> Okay, not even mentioning the down, da, da, down, 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 down. Following that up with some shit MJ impersonations, when would anybody move like that given the music that's being played behind you? It's like this moody new rock and you're doing the fucking robot, you cheesy lame ass. Then at some point in the show, he picks up a guitar. Well, he doesn't really pick it up, more like he kind of scrambles to grab the guitar and shove the input cable in as quickly as possible. <laughs> I guess buying a wireless transmitter for $40 on Amazon is just a cost Corey is not willing to expend. All of that excess money goes into his multiple wardrobe changes during their 27 minute show. So when Corey finally manages to get the guitar plugged in, he looks like he just started playing guitar for the first time like two weeks ago. His strumming hand is just picking at the top string so delicately, it looks like he's pleasing his own vagina instead of playing a guitar. And he's staring daggers into that fretboard pretty much the entire time, like what he's playing requires just so much concentration. There's no way he can look at the audience, sing, and play all at once. Corey's brain does not have the bandwidth to handle such a task. Seriously, th this is some of the most rigid arthritic guitar strumming I've ever seen. It's like the strings are giving him a mild shock every time he touches them. So as he's playing his latest hit single, The Joke, at the end of the song, Corey Feldman, the fell dog, attempts to play a guitar solo. <laughs> Look at that face. That must be the face that so many desperate women have seen hovering over them after a few too many hydrocodone and whiskey cocktails. He's just doing some random chromatic wank high up on the neck. And you can hear after the solo, it's like bathed in delay that keeps repeating just to help him compensate for his lack of precision or really anything at all. Hey guys, you want to play a guitar solo and learn how to shred like the fell dog? And by all means, let's keep the actual talented guitarist in the background mix so Corey's lack of talent isn't overshadowed by someone who can actually play. He 
ends his set with that shitty dubstep rock song, Go For It, off of his Angelic to the Core album. Get it, get it. All she wanna do is twerk. Hit the club. Tell him. Remember this was the one that featured Snoop Dogg for a whole 10 seconds? Well, Corey Feldman pretty much gave everyone exactly what they wanted. This was just as awful as anything he's ever done. Last year, when Corey played Riot Fest in Chicago, some writer commented on how it was almost cruel to invite Corey's band to play a show that was booked with actual musicians. But hey, every festival needs a good novelty act now and then. Corey is clearly enjoying this, and we are clearly enjoying it as well. Does it really matter at the end of the day why we're enjoying it? I would submit that it does not. And it also makes sense that Corey was on this festival, since... Fred Durst and him are apparently friends. Fred featured on one of the songs off the legendary Angelic to the Core album, so I don't know. I guess he seemed like a obvious choice for Fred Durst's gang of weirdos, his his whack pack, if you will, but I don't know. Anyway, tell me if you've been able to catch the Fell Dog this year live and um, what you thought. Um, it was entertaining at, at, at best. I would... I would venture to hope. Anyway, until next time, enjoy the rest of your night.